In this video, we're going to go over the class data questions for the uh, Lab 7 da class data analysis. So this one's got uh, quite, quite a little bit of questions uh, to go over, um, peering on through this. Uh, so we'll just take it one at a time. So our first thing we're going to do is mean standard deviation of the mean force for each condition. So that, that's not going to be too bad. Equals to average and also standard deviation. We're going to do the sample. Again, that's all we got, so we're going to go with the sample. Let's lower those numbers. Always have to do that. All right, and I'm just going to copy these, paste, paste, and lastly, paste. So from here we can copy those on in, shoes jogging, overwrite cells. Stuff we've done before, whoops, control V does not work or command V does not work. It's, uh, it'll just place both of them in there. Have to do that overwrite cells specifically. Maybe it's different on other ones, but it's not working like that for me. Then we got, I did a right click, we got all borders, bring that on back, and this looks a little bit prettier. All right, next step is we're gonna create a box and whisker plot of mean force for the bare walk, barefoot walking, shoes walking, and so on conditions. So we'll go ahead and do that. To do that, we need to move these on down, not move them on down, but just create separate copies down here. So this will be mean force in newtons, and this one's barefoot walking. You can abbreviate that if you'd like. Um, I'm going to keep it as is, see how it looks at least. Um, we may need to abbreviate it just because those will be a lot of words uh, to put down there, but we'll, we'll see. This one was shoes walking. Okay. And to, to, do, to do like an easy abbreviation, it would just be um, like this one's barefoot shoes, so uh, shoes sh SB, shoes B, you know, SB. Uh, so this, or actually this one's barefoot uh, jog, sorry, barefoot jog. Jogging. Just abbreviate with like the first first two letters or so. Makes it easy. And lastly, we got shoes jogging. All right, our box and whisker. We just need to highlight all of that. We'll see how this looks. Histogram, box and whisker. Okay, this one doesn't look that bad. That's that is perfectly acceptable right here. I wasn't sure how much space I was going to have down here, but it looks good. And we can tidy that on up. Our first one will go to 400 as our minimum. Not 4,000, 400. Uh, and we'll go to 1,500 just to make things a little bit prettier. Yeah, 450. Uh, you'll have to go to something else probably. Just, you know, don't leave as much sort of empty space and make things all crunched up together. Make it so you can, you know, visually see these things easily. All right. Just need to add a couple things, but otherwise this is mostly, mostly pretty good. All right, returning to our first question. So we're gonna be looking for a mean difference. Is We're asking the question now, is there any difference between any of these at all? Um, there's only going to be a few of these that we're actually interested in. We're not going to do like every single comparison, but we'll we'll make a few. Um, before I can do that, though, I'm going to have to put 
put these all in an area that I can actually um, do the ANOVA on. So this is barefoot walking. Just gonna name them. So I don't have to do it each time. Easy peasy. All right, cool. So now our question, ANOVA, single factor. We're gonna run that. So is there any difference between these f the means of these four at all for any condition? And our alpha level 0 0.05. We're doing this by columns. Labels in the first row for me. 0 0.05, we'll call this the ANOVA. All right. So that is a very small p-value. So this is basically saying there's 27 zeros before we get to an actual value here. So that's very small. We got our F statistic p-value. We report those in here and say what it is. I'm not sure what yours will show. It should show something kind of similar may not be the exact but it will be pretty similar because again we're comparing like the shoes walking and barefoot walking are going to be kind of similar themselves but then comparing them to the jogging ones well they're pretty different we can pretty well see that we don't need a statistical test to really say oh these the barefoot walking is different from the shoes you know you can visually see that on here it's I mean we would run it anyway just because it's uh, necessary but uh, this is pretty clear, and it was pretty clear from the chart. However, we're more interested in other comparisons, so we'll we'll go ahead and take a look at them. Um, for this, since we're doing a whole bunch of pairwise comparisons from this model, we're going to have to make a correction, just as we did before with our, our Bonferroni corrections. So our normal alpha level is 0 0.05. Now we're going to be doing... We got, uh, I skipped one, so here's one, two, three, and four. So we're gonna be doing four tests. So we're gonna divide that by four, which is 0 0.0125, which is what I have already on here. Cool. All right, so let's go ahead and now we're gonna do our t-tests. We have, uh, for our first hypothesis, uh, sorry, for our first one, we're going to do a mean force between walking shoes and jogging shoes. Let's come up to data analysis. Equal variance is assumed. We have let's see our variable one range, walking shoes, shoes walk. I'm going to include that. And then jogging shoes. So we're comparing walking and jogging conditions for shoes. Alright, 0, 0 0.125 and labels. So I'm going to call this um, second hypothesis. Uh, since these have a long name, I'm going to give them just the second hypothesis, third hypothesis, and so on just to keep things uh, uh, organized. Cool. All right, so that's a lot of lot of zeros um, before our first actual ze uh, number. Before our first actual number, we'll expand that out. It said basically 15 zeros before we get a number, so we can uh, we can safely reject that null hypothesis. Uh, we'll come back to getting the the Cohen's D, but we have our T statistic, uh, we have our P value, and we'll get that Cohen's D on the back side. On the back side, once we finish up all these other T tests. All right, so our next one, coming back to data, our third hypothesis walking barefoot and jogging barefoot. 
barefoot walk and jogging barefoot. So I'm being a little careful just because this is uh, this can get a little confusing because there's a lot of potential comparisons we can make but we are only making a couple of those. So our third hypothesis. A lot of a uh, lot of zeros just as the same before walking barefoot to jogging barefoot walking barefoot jogging okay I'll just expand that on out you don't have to do that for yours if you don't want to wrong way great okay coming back to our sheet Now we're going to do a, another one. Let's see, we just did walking barefoot, jogging barefoot. Now we're going to do walking barefoot and walking shoes. Barefoot walking and walking shoes right here. Fourth hypothesis. Alright, so this is one where we have failed to reject. We're at 0 0.109 and we need to get below 0 0.025. So we failed to reject on this one. Okay, still got our T statistic and everything. Coming along here we have our last hypothesis comparison, jogging barefoot to jogging shoes. Alright, jogging barefoot to jogging shoes. We'll do this one real quick. This will be our last one. Okay. Fifth hypothesis. All right, we have failed to reject this one as well. So the differences between walk run, there's differences in the mean force there. Uh, it looks like for my data, and then for the uh, for the same same thing, barefoot walk versus barefoot jog, for shoes walk versus shoes jog. But there doesn't seem like there's much difference if we look at the force of uh, a, you know one walking gait cycle uh, for for one trial of one person's uh, or not one person's of of the classes um, uh, walking with or without shoes or jogging with or without shoes. That's at least for my data. You'll have to interpret yours as, uh, by yourself. But So, not too shabby. Um, yeah, not, not too bad. The only thing that, eh, if we were paying a little bit more attention, we, at least from this data, this looks like I'd probably have to do uh, and equal variance is not assumed. This is based on my data. I'm not sure what yours is. Uh, don't worry about it right now. We will have an instance where this will come up and we'll actually address it formally. Um, just know that this, we would actually run an unequal variances here because these variances are very, very large um, between these two numbers right here. This one looks a little bit, uh, it's just a little bit under. So the actual comparison or what they want you to do is you can either run an F test, which is something you could do from the data analysis or uh, between the two, two variables, or you can double check by doing uh, the variance of the larger one divided by the smaller one. And if it's at four or more, then it's, uh, then, then you cannot make that equal variance is assumed. So this one's pretty close for the barefoot walking and jogging, but uh, this one is clearly more. So yeah, 4.6. Again, we're not going to worry about that right here. If we were actually publishing any data like this, yes, we would. Um, but for, for uh, easiness sake, we're just going to worry about that right now. Of We'll just do this. The main reason is we wouldn't be able to do a Cohen's D without this, and uh, we're not going to mess around with that sort of stuff just yet. We will have an instance where this comes up, and we will address it there. So let's do our Cohen's D. 
So absolute value of difference in means divided by square root of the pooled variance. And the reason we don't get that, um, th that we can't do a, co a normal Cohen's D with a uh, unequal variance is assumed, or equal variance is not assumed, is we don't get pooled variance, or we can't actually calculate a pooled variance that um, is in a non-biased manner. So, yeah, that's the main reason. Okay, well this, yeah, of course it's going to be pretty large because of the differences in these means and the pool variance will again is quite large so uh, yeah <laughs> we'll copy and paste that Let's see that was at D as in dog 8 okay oh whoops that's that's on me I put it in the wrong column There we go. So even though these failed to reject, uh, this one, eh, medium. It's getting a little bit close to, uh, to rejecting. Uh, this one's a little bit higher, and so there may not be as much there. Um, if we were to collect a whole bunch more data, we might find something. Uh, whether that's meaningful, we'd have to, we'd, that's another question in terms of, okay, how much force are you feeling? You know, 50 something newtons here is that much when they were talking about uh, numbers in the thousands of newtons a thousand or more newtons um, but anyway this is everything that we would need uh, this is everything that you need if you do have any questions please contact your lab instructor and I'll see you in the next one